All right, I'm printing you all out hard copies of virtually everything, okay? And uh, I want you to get this to work. A couple things. First of all, again, it is not mandatory that you come in here and you put in this back button right here or this back button right there. You don't have to do that. Next, as I mentioned previously, you might want to play with the enabled property on the buttons. I just want you to get used to this stuff. All right. Now, I was out, um, probably I've told you this before, I take a lot of online classes. And I got sent an email yesterday by a guy who I've taken some classes from. I think he's Indian. I think his name is Sadap or something like that. Really an intelligent guy. And um, if you look up on the screen, please, I just sent this to you. It's a YouTube. It's Sa Sandeep. I can't even try the last name. But um, if I click on this, it's his YouTube channel. And among other things on that YouTube channel, he's got five videos on here that are really good. I'm preparing some stuff for you now. Some of them are going to be based off of what he's done. This, if you look on the screen, is how you use a spinner in Android. A spinner is what you and I call a drop-down list. So he creates two spinners, one that has the name of all the months and one that has a bunch of years in it. So if I choose June here and 2023 here and I click the Submit button, it'll say June 2023. Does that make sense? All right, he's got that one. This is how to use radio buttons and how to put them into a group. All right. <clears throat> There's a total of five of them. Let's see. Looking for the rest. I didn't want to give you the address I did, but that's the only one I could find. This one, how to get user input, show a toast, etc. That's good. Like I said, there's five of them. I'll try to get you all five. I had it down, but for some reason I've, I've misplaced what I had. In it. They're just really good. Here's how to use checkboxes. Here's how to pass data from one activity to another. If you watch all five, it's a total, it's a good two hours. And I'm not saying do it today. I'm not not saying do it today. All right. But I'm going to be going over this material but it's the kind of material, depending upon what you plan on putting into the app that you are creating on your own, are you going to want to ask people their gender, for example? If so, you'd want radio buttons. Are you going to ask them which of these activities do you enjoy? And if it's more than one, it might be checkboxes, etc. He explains how to do that stuff. All right, again, I'm doing some of the same stuff myself. His are written a hell of a lot better than mine are. The other thing that he does, and I'd say if you do nothing else, I would suggest maybe watching. Yeah, unfortunately, it's long. This, first, this is the first one of five. It's called How to Pass Data from One Activity to Another. All right? And But what he does that I don't do is typically when I build my interfaces like this, I build them from the design screen. He builds almost his entire thing from here, from the text screen. The advantage that he has, he very, you know, if, if there's anything that's coming up as an error or whatever, that, boom, he just comes over here and fixes it. Because he can do this. All right? And, you know, he's that good. The other thing that he does in his, and again, this is something we'll talk about not today, all right, I think, Chris, you mentioned this to me a while back. We were talking about layouts. I think you were the one who said, well, why wouldn't you ever not want a constraint layout? And what he does is he demonstrates linear layouts and relative layouts in these things. And you can even put a layout within a layout. And it's much easier for him to manipulate and put things here and there as opposed to the way I've been showing you. All right? So again, if you get the chance, I would strongly recommend it. I'm going to try to find the links just to those five presentations that he has done, and I'm going to get them all to you. 
But what I want you to do, it, what we're going to do in just a few minutes, all right, is I want you by Friday to try to get this to work. All right? I'm giving you the code. I'd like you to get it to work. I'd like you to think about working with that enabled property so when it first comes up, as I mentioned to you previously, all right, when this comes up, there's no reason that the individual stats and the group stats, they should, they should not be enabled. You should disable these, and after somebody puts in something, then enable them. Second, look on the screen, please. Get rid of that button. That one right there. Third, get rid of that button. Or else find a way that if you go back, it doesn't lose your data. All right, I'm going to be looking for that tonight. All right, but I want you to go in, use your own colors, use your own whatever. I'm going to give you most of the rest of the period. But before we do that, I wanted to do one last thing for the class today. And that is I want to go back to this that we've been looking at. We went through about the first half, and I want to run through some of the rest of it. This was how to run an app on a virtual device. You've been doing that. So I don't think there's going to be a problem with that. All right. Now, they also talk to you in here about how to run it on an actual device. There's virtual and there's running it on an actual device. I'm not sure exactly where it is. There it is. On a physical device. What I have to do by no later than Thursday or Friday is to bring those uh, tablets in here. And you have to start getting acclimated with using the tablets. When you present, when you present at the end of the semester, I'm hoping that you will be presenting on a tablet and not on an emulator. It looks much more professional to see it on an actual device than it does to see it on an emulator. All right. So they explain here how to run a device, run it on a regular physical device. We're going to go over that later on in the week. Okay, I'm not going to do it now. Next. You may have noticed this before. You may not have. I don't think I mentioned it to you, but I could have. All right, if you look down on the screen here, on the bottom of the screen, there is a, there is a bunch of stuff that's down here on the bottom. All right? One of the things that's here, again, you've got to look on the screen. Probably my head's in the way. But right here, there's something called LogCat. You can log messages out to the system using LogCat. It's a really, really good debugging tool. So you're trying to do something and it won't work and for the life of you, you can't figure out why it's not working. Then what you might want to do is send log messages out to print out the associated information. That is explained in here using the log. Now you might say, well, aren't you going to show it to us? The examples they give in here are good. You will learn by trying stuff. All right. One of I, one of the students who started this semester, I can I can kind of tell they're going to be really good at this from the work they've done thus far. But they asked me a question this morning that kind of made me think. Okay, well maybe I was thinking you're better than you are or whatever. But what I said to them was just try it. You know, if you always do a save all before you try something, the worst that's going to happen, all right, the worst that's going to happen is, you know, you're, you're, you're going to lock the machine up. And on that note, if you look up on the screen here, where is it? anybody know what VCS here stands for? Anybody want to guess what VCS there stands for? Version Control System. So if you come in here and you choose, what is it, um, enable version control configuration, and you look in here, well, looky here, they have Git. All right, we're going to try, I'm going to try to go through that where we're going to take a project using Git, all right, and we'll do that. But... If you want to take a look at that, feel free to. Okay. But there's a, about four or five pages here on this log cat. Again, adding log statements to your app. If you add a regular log statement, please look on the screen. 
If you add an info statement, it's black. Who cares? Well, all the other text that's going to be running in the window is black. If you set it to W, warning, I believe it's blue. If you set it to error, it's red. So if you want to be able to see your own statements, if you make them red, they'll stand out in front of everything else if you want to do that. All right, there's other things that you can do too. They explain what tags are and how to create the statements. It's pretty well done. All right. That's it for that section. But when you look, layouts and resources for the UI. All right. Again, I don't want to read to you, but I mentioned to you a while back that virtually everything that you put on a screen, every widget or every control you put on a screen is known as a view. As it says, every element of the screen is a view. And here are some of them. I'm not going to read them. You've already worked with text views. You've worked with edit text. You've worked with buttons. You've worked with image views. There are other ones, you know, you can go in there and you can look on your palette for some of the other ones that are there. We are going to use Recycler View. And if you've never seen that before, have you ever seen something on your phone where it brings up like a list of stuff? Maybe you got 20 or 30 you can start flicking. We're going to do that. All right, typically that's done with a recycler view. And why? Because you used to use a list view for it. It was more code and it took more time. So they rewrote it as a recycler view, which uses less code and works faster. So we'll talk about that in a later class. If you want to know more about some of this stuff, notice they talk about view groups and views. They'll give you some pictures. And I'm not going to talk about it, but look on the screen now, please. These are the different layouts you can use. Constraint layout, which we have been using. Linear layout, relative layout, ta table layout, frame layout, and grid layout. These are some of the things you can do with them. Why am I telling you that? It's time for you to start thinking, yeah, it's three and a half months from now, but what the hell am I going to write an app of my own on? What should it look like? All right? And you can see the different layouts. Now, as they say in here, it says to learn more about the different layout types, and they give you a link here. Virtually all of these links here point you back to developer.android.com. All right? So they've got examples. I'm not going to run through these. Here's a linear layout. They show you how to build it. They talk about the layout editor, what you have to do in order to do this. The different things that are on the toolbar. We've talked about this stuff already. I mentioned this stuff to you, at least most of it we've, we've looked at. Here's something more on the constraint layout. They explain those lines that I've talked to you about. How you can resize, etc. How you can constrain, why you might want to constrain. All right? But they give examples of virtually every one of these layouts that are in here. They explain this, which I showed you. But again, this is a fast way to go and set margins on top, on the bottom, on the left, and on the right. They talk about the difference. This is something you're going to have to know. The difference between wrap content and match parent. Please look up on the screen, please. All right. Even if you're like, ah, I don't have to anymore, please do it anyway. All right. If if I'm working on this screen that's right here, this one, and let's let's just pretend for right now that the only thing I have here is this image right there. Okay. If I do match parent, what the system will do is it says, okay. This image view is inside of this constraint layout. There's nothing else there, so have it match the parent. Match parent means take up as much room as you possibly can. Did you hear what I said? Wrap content says only take up the room you need. Sometimes you want to match parent. Sometimes you want to wrap content. All right, and that is explained 
probably much better than I just did inside of this section here. All right. Orientations and devices. Again, start thinking about it. I got a game. Okay, I'm going to make a game for my final project. Do I want it to be landscape only? All right. This BMI thing, I didn't even look at it. Let's, let's just take a real quick look. I'm going to go back to my BMI screen here. All right, right there. And landscape. It actually doesn't look terrible when you look on the screen. I'm not saying it looks good, but you don't have stuff on top of other stuff, etc. So it's not terrible. All right. I will expect that when you go in and you are creating your own app, that unless you say vertical or, or landscape or horizontal, and you have it be vertical only or horizontal only, I'm going to look at it in both ways. And it better look professional both ways. You're going to have a rubric that's going to explain exactly how this is going to be graded for you. All right, And you're also going to give it to me in about four iterations. Here's editing the XML directly. As, like I said, that's what that Sandup or Sandeep, that's what he does. So there's different ways of getting to the same result. Here's some relative layout stuff. All right. Here expl this explains everything that's under the res folder. What the drawable holds, what the layout holds, what the menu holds, what MIP map holds, and what the values hold. What I want to be able to do is have us get to the point where when we create a project as a class, it's going to be it's going to be pretty complex. But you'll have looked at all this stuff, so you'll at least know what we're talking about. So here's the strings, and they talk about how you're going to make your own string resources. They also go in there and talk about how you can make your own color resources, your own dimension resources. Just so you know, if you look on the screen, we have not talked about this yet. The reason that you use dimension resources, if you're constantly setting things to, let's say, 30 SP, 40 DP, etc., that's considered to be kind of unprofessional. You should give those names and use the names. That's what you do with dimensions. Responding to view clicks, here's the on click. And I showed you that when we wrote our own. And then they have on click listener in there too. All right. And the last thing that's, oh, I guess there's one more text and scrolling views. Text views, if you think you didn't get enough on text views. You can take a look here, starting on around page 80. You can also create scrolling views to move up and down. <clears throat> and they give you an example in here. All right. And finally, the chapter here ends with resources to help you learn. This has got some really good stuff in it. Some of it, again, points right back to developer.android.com. Some of it does not. All right, but they've got documentation on just about everything. And if you don't know it, look on here, please. Notice one of the things under android.developer.android.com. They've got browse sample code. They've got a bunch of GitHub repositories out there. All right, and what's wrong with using something like that? All right, at least to get started. Hopefully, you're going to rewrite it or add to it, put your own stuff on there. More on Android Studio right here, including there's some videos if you want more than what you've got in class, some documentation on Android Studio. One thing we're going to we're going to touch on in, later in the semester is what's called material design. All right, which is more or less a design type of philosophy. There's some stuff on that here. Development, distributing, the whole thing of videos that they have on there. All right. Again, exploring the code samples in the Android SDK, how you do that. And that's pretty much it. All right. 
So we have now gone through lesson one. I want you to clean this thing up. I've got the code. I'm going to put it together and give everybody a copy. All right. And then if you get it done today, great. All right. But then tomorrow, what we'll do, because I'm going to give you a couple hours right now, two hours and what, 20 minutes. But tomorrow, we're going to go in and we're going to build another app as a class. All right. We'll make it simple and then we'll add some stuff to it. All right. And I'm trying to bring in different stuff basically with each app, not trying to throw too much at you at once but also trying to challenge you at the same time, all right? So just so you know, what you have, what I just passed out to you, what's on top are screenshots that I took. That's the main page, all right? That's the individual page or with the individual stats. That's the group page. Then after that, You've got about three pages that have the entire main activity on it, followed by one page with the individual activity on it, followed by one page with the group activity on it. Please remember that when you are coming in here, the way that you will do this, all right, is you're going to have to come in, as I showed you, and go in under your project window, go in underneath where you've got your main activity and right mouse click, choose new, choose activity, and choose empty activity. I named mine, my activities, I named them, um, I think individual activity or group activity or something like that. I don't know, it's in there. So I'm going to give you the rest of the period to work on that. And my guess is probably what we're going to do is I'm going to, we're going to do the next three days, we'll do some kind of an app every day as a class. And then when we get done, I'm going to give you one to work on that will be sort of patterned after that, but it will be different. All right, we'll do that. And, and then again on Friday when you come in here, I'll have the tablets in here as well. All right? Should be, I'm going to pause this, but that should be probably it for any lecture for the rest of the period.